everybody, Livingston here. Today we're jumping into another episode of The Twilight Zone. This time it's season two, episode four, A Thing About Machines came out October 27th, 1960. Looking forward to this one because it's yet another episode I haven't sat down and watched before. But before we get started, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to continue on this voyage to episode 156 of The Twilight Zone. And don't forget to comment as well because we're about to go over the comments to last week's episode. So if you like this episode and you want to keep on trucking with us, don't forget to actually comment below because next week I will be going over those comments for this week's episode. So let's get into some comments from last week's. P Sparks 3419 says, It's amazing to see how many things the Twilight Zone did for the first time that are now common techniques in the film industry. Good eye, Livingston, catching the parallel to the taxi driver mirror scene. No doubt the great directors and writers of today have studied this series. I'm pretty sure of it as well, uh, P Sparks. I'm, I mean, it seems like about every episode kind of goes into uh, a movie or something that people have taken from that episode. So it's really awesome to see... Uh, people take a lot of things from this actual series. Uh, thanks for the comment. Only Carl Henning says, Great script, great performance, and what is largely a one-man show and creatively shot. Very much so. I mean, when you have one room and one person basically doing the entire episode, you got to think outside the box and do some different things because if you don't, people are going to get bored just sitting there watching a guy kind of go a little loony inside of a, a motel room as he's looking at his reflection. The Cosmic Kid 2562 says, Psychological crime jo uh, drama. Great ending. Yeah, very good ending. The only thing I didn't like about last week's episode is it was, you, you kind of knew what was going to happen. You knew what was going to be coming up. And I was a little let down by that. So it probably won't end up in my top five when it comes to this season. But it's it's at least good. You know, Twilight Zone has not disappointed yet. Every episode has been wonderful. I've enjoyed sitting down and watching every single one of them so far. There have been ones that have been out of this world great. And some of them that have been just okay. You know, and I'm okay with okay. <laughs> but uh, thanks for the comment. And we have Welch. Uh, they say maybe the nervous man was pressured all of his life. That's very possible. I mean, mostly when people are pressured, it's because they are nervous because of that. I mean, it's like a vice versa catch-22. If you're pressured, you're nervous. If you're nervous, you're pressured. I mean, there's a reason why people are nervous, and it's usually because they have a lot of pressure and a lot of anxiety going on in their life. This guy was into crime and he was trying to take the easy road to make the little money here and there and this time he was about to step over the line until his conscience basically said whoa 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 uh don't do that <laughs> you know, i'm gonna take over make things better we're gonna get married we're gonna do this we're gonna do that and things are gonna be a whole lot better for us if you go my way not the uh, nervous man's way uh, Empire Jeff says, $4 for a room seems like a bargain. Definitely is. When I looked it up in that episode, it said it was $40 in today's money. $4 is $40 today. Uh, you know, that's what happens when you have a 60-year span between what things were back then and what things are now. And it's crazy how expensive things are today. But $40, day, $40 today, you'd be lucky to get a room for that price. So, yeah, pretty crazy. All right, so let's get into the episode and see what we're getting into. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Now we're outside this time, no set. I mean, this is a set, but it's, it's on location set. TV repairs. Finchley, B. Finchley. Uh, how are you today, Mr. Finchley? I'll answer that burning question after you tell me what's wrong with that uh, miracle of modern science. Miracle. <laughs> I presume I'm to be dunned once again for three times the worth of the blasted thing. You'd kick your foot through the screen, remember? Oh, yeah. The set was not working properly. I tried to get it to do so in a perfectly normal fashion. By kicking your foot through the screen? <laughs> that had showed who's boss. Yeah. You may read me off the damages. What exactly is the purpose of the Better Business Bureau when it allows itinerant extortionists like you to come back week after... Well, this guy's a bit of a jerk. Looking forward to this ending with him in a bad spot, because this is the Twilight Zone, and typically when they're in a bad mood at the very beginning and are jerks to everybody else, every other character, they tend to not have great endings in terms for them. It typically can be a great ending for the audience, though. What does go wrong with these things, Mr. Finchley? Have you got any idea? You're a very unreceptive man. I have already explained to you the television set simply did not work properly. That gave nothing but static. Are you sure that's all that was wrong with him? All right, Mr. Finchley, I'll send you a bill. Of that, I have no doubt. 
What is it with you and machine? It just so happens that every machine in this house is... Is what? You should drink. It'll help things. <laughs> oh, dear. It's 12.10. Why is it chiming at 12.10? Or is it 2? That will be enough of that. It's dinging way more than 2, so it's got to be 12. I said that will be enough of that. Stop! Up, oh, still going. This is Mr. Bartlett Finchley, aged... <laughs> Freeze frame. He's a bachelor and a recluse with few friends. Hey, it's on the TV. In short, Mr. Bartlett Finchley is a malcontent, born either too late or too early in the century. Mm. Next stop for Mr. Bartlett Finchley... The Twilight Zone. I like how they're kind of putting him in there now, where you can see him visually as he's doing the narration at the beginning and end of the shows, and they do it in such an interesting way. I mean, the last episode, I think, was the best, where he just kind of walks in as we're having the camera look down upon the set. I thought that was pretty good. Well, is this all you've done? Uh, that's 30 pages in three hours and a half. That's the best I can do, Mr. Finchley. Thomas Jefferson wrote the entire Declaration of Independence with a feather quill, and it took him only half a day. Why don't you hire Mr. Jefferson? Yes. I'll tell you what, Mr. Finchley. You get yourself another girl. One with three arms and with roughly the same sensitivity as an alligator. <laughs> I've had it. Yep, quitting. Miss Rogers, please, don't leave. I was just thinking that uh, we could have dinner or something. A theater, perhaps? Like a date? Oh, very sweet, Mr. Finchley. Thank you. But? But no, thank you. Oh. Goodbye, Mr. Finchley. I'd like very much not to be alone for a while. Pay me more. She s seems to have an uh, interest. What's your trouble? Does there have to be trouble just because I... I'm desperately tired. I haven't slept for four nights. Mm. Things have been happening. What things? Odd things. Mm. That television machine in there, it goes on late at night and wakes me up. It just goes on all by itself. That radio I kept in the bedroom, that went on and off too. There's a conspiracy in this house. <laughs> the television set, the radio, the clock, even that miserable car I drive. Maybe you should live in a cabin in the woods with no electronics. The steering wheel turned in my hand. It smashed a headlight. It cost $140. Dear Lord, that's pretty cheap. <laughs> Probably like 600 a day. Past three months, I've been seeing and hearing a collection of mechanical Frankensteinian monsters. Probably should leave. You're terribly ill and you need medical attention. So it follows that no empty-headed little female with a mechanical face can do anything to me either. <laughs> In this conspiracy you speak of, this mortal combat between you and the... Oh, and Mortal Kombat came out like twice. Two episodes in a row. Get out! She is. You did a good job chasing her that way. The typewriter. The machines are talking to him now. What is he saying? Get out. Get out. Get out of here, Finchley. Get out of here. It's his house. Should you get out? Who are you to tell me to get out of here? A device. <laughs> what will happen if he doesn't leave? And why do they want him to leave? Is it because he keeps destroying them in a way? And suddenly they become sentient beings? Why don't you get out of here, Finchley? Wow, who is she? It's Margarita Cordova who plays the girl on TV. Miss Moore, please. Oh, Agatha. Yes, it has been a long time. Too long. Which indeed prompts this call. Uh, how about dinner tonight? No. I see. All right, I'll uh, I'll call you again. When? In an hour, tomorrow, next week. What's in the little black book? This is Don Lear, please. Oh, Pauline, is this you? How is my favorite attractive young widow? Yes, I was just wondering if... Oh, I'll send you a wedding present. Getting married. He is having no luck with the ladies, but it's kind of his fault when he yells at them, acts like a jerk. A whole existence dedicated to embarrassing me. Kind of doing it yourself, dude. Who needs any of you? Well, you bought him for a reason. Uh-oh. Those typically don't... Hey, now. It's not really a sharp blade. Why don't you get out of here, Finchley? Get out of here, Finchley! Who are you? Talk. What has happened? Something to do with his car. 
She rolled down the driveway and right out into the street. You're lucky it didn't hit anyone. You got the keys? And you ought to check that emergency brake the first chance you get. Understand, mister? I wonder if no one likes you. You may remain on my property, goggling at this astonishing sight, for another three and a half minutes. <laughs> when I return with my car keys, I shall enlist the aid of this uh, underpaid gendarme to forcibly eject you. Make friends wherever you go, huh, Finchley? Idiots. You kind of hope that something bad happens to him at the end of this. I think out of all the characters that we have met in this series so far, he is the most foul. I'm not, I'm talking about the way his personality is. I mean, of course we've had Nazis and some other bad people in this show, but personality-wise, he's, he's somebody I'm rooting against. There's no clock. So if he doesn't get out, what's going to happen to Finchley? Is he going to get, like, sucked into the TV? Is he... I don't know. There's a lot more being written this time, though. Why don't you get out of here, Finch? Why don't you? Get out of here. No! No! Are you gonna get repaired again? <laughs> they must be doing that with like a string or something. Uh oh. The car. Where are you going? <laughs> of course, chasing them down. Jump! Something. Get up! It's toying with him at this point. I like how they squeal tires on dirt roads. <laughs> Right in the pool. Is he gonna jump for it? You gonna jump in the pool? No! Run, something. Or just fall. That's That works. Can he not swim? He died. You pulled the body out? Yeah. That's funny, they usually float. He wasn't weighted either. There was nothing to hold him down. Huh. The neighbors said that he'd been shouting and running around last night. I wonder what it was that could have scared him. Hmm. Could be he had a heart attack or something. I kind of think he drowned. <laughs> it could just be that he was tormented by an imagination as sharp as his wit and as pointed as his dislikes. This is one explanation that has left the premises with the deceased in the Twilight Zone. Well, that was it. Episode 4 of The Twilight Zone, a uh, thing about machines, and I enjoyed it. It was a good episode, just like all the rest of The Twilight Zone episodes, but I don't think it lives in the pantheon of great episodes of The Twilight Zone. It was entertaining in the fact that I knew what was going to happen when before it actually did happen. I knew the guy wasn't going to be making out of this in a happy place because he was a jerk right from the beginning. You kind of get to know what's going to happen to these characters before you get into the nitty-gritty of the entire story and being that this guy was a jerk right from the start that you knew what was going to be happening to him at the very end of this episode kind of made things not as great or as good as a Twilight Zone should be. I think a Twilight Zone's perfect when you don't know the twist to the, either the very end or the last few minutes of the actual episode and it keeps you wondering. This one I knew what was going to happen uh, I didn't know it was going to happen the way that it did, but I do know that he was not going to end in a great place. And it turns out he died, he drowned, he was, uh, whether it was the pool that kept him down and, and the water just weighed him down, or, because he didn't float. I don't know why he didn't float, he didn't have any weights on him, as the police officer said, but the fact that the machines were coming after him and whatnot, and just didn't like him for some reason, maybe because he kept breaking them and he just didn't have any patience with machines in general. It's like, if the machines are after you that much and they were warning you to get out, maybe you should get rid of all your machines or you should just move out and move to a cabin out in the middle of the woods and just stay away from machinery altogether or maybe become a better person because he was disliked throughout the entire episode. Every time he invited a woman over and any time he wanted to talk to somebody, they didn't want to stick around for him. And I totally understood why and where they were coming from. But with all that being said, it was, a, I don't know, an okay episode, as I say. It wasn't great. It wasn't the best, but 
it was entertaining and that's usually all that matters but it goes a long way when a twilight zone can really suck you in and keep you guessing until the very end this episode didn't do that for me but still enjoyed it but let's go into some trivia and see what it took to get this episode off the ground to make the possessed car scenes work, the stunt drivers used various practical ways of disguising themselves so they would not be seen behind the wheel of the car. In some scenes, they crouched down below the dash. In the scenes where the car was filled with dark windows, the driver dressed all in black from head to toe to uh, blend in the shadows. For the brighter scenes, the driver appeared to be wearing white canvas to match the convertible top's canvas covering. Oh, well, that's cool. The car is a 1939 Lagonda. V12 Rapid Drophead Coupe. Hmm, that's a mouthful. Tragically and ironically, in light of the episode's final scene, actor Jay Overholtz died in an auto accident at the age of 43. Well, that's sad. Uh, when was that in terms of the actual episode itself? So he died in 1966. So he was... Man, he was 37? He, he didn't look 37. He must have did a lot of smoking or something. I don't know, but he sh I would have thought he was in his late 40s. Let me know, comment below. What did you think the age of the actor was when you first seen him? Guest star Barney Phillips, second of four appearances on The Twilight Zone. Okay. This is the earlier of two Twilight Zone episodes in which the main character questions the integrity of his TV repairman and ends up smashing his TV screen. The second was What's in the Box featuring William Dermarest and Joan Blondell. What's in the Box? I always think of Seven with uh, Brad Pitt when he's at the very end. I won't uh, mess it up with anybody who hasn't seen Seven, but that's one of the famous lines from that. What's in the Box? Stephen King has stated that part of the inspiration for his novel, Christine, came from the possessed car chasing Finchley at the climax. Well, hey, don't we say that about every time we see a Twilight Zone episode, it seems to kickstart some kind of movie. This And this time it's a book, uh, which turned into a movie Stephen King uh, wrote. But, hey, that's, that's the Twilight Zone for you. It seems like every episode has a movie that it's based off of, or has a, or a movie's based on that actual episode. But anyways, let me know, comment below what you think, and I'll read those comments next week. And until next time, see you later.